Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor and yet another video podcast. As always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today in the video, guys, I'm going to give you a rare glimpse of the 737 MAX cockpit. I'm also going to talk a little bit about the 737 MAX and when I think it's going to get back into service again. So, uh, stay tuned. Right guys, so um, there is a constant flood of news coming out regarding the 737 MAX and sometimes it can be a little bit hard to, to understand what is actually big new news and what is just the same old news being kind of recirculated all over again in the press. So lately, the only thing that we really know is that Boeing still have not released the 737 MAX into service and uh, the biggest news that came out last week was that EASA had published a list of things they wanted Boeing to do before they would consider uh, lifting the, um, the grounding of the 737 MAX in Europe. Now one of the things in there was something that we hadn't heard anything about before which was uh, a concern that under certain circumstances that the uh, uh, the 737 MAX was a bit slow on releasing the autopilot was in disengaging the autopilot um, now I don't think that that in reality is such a big thing I think it's just a part of the ongoing investigation and the ongoing um, software update that Boeing has to do but it's still one of these new things and the only thing we do know is that Boeing has pushed forward the, uh, the release of the MAX from what they originally said, which was going to be towards the end of the summer in August, now they're talking more about December, maybe Christmas. So what do I think? Well, I think essentially that Boeing knows exactly what they need to do in order to get this aircraft back flying again. But I know that they're working hard, and I think that they're working very, very hard to make sure that all the authorities out there in the world, be it EASA, the FAA, the Canadian authorities, the Chinese authorities, Indian, Australian, all of the African countries, um, that all of these authorities are happy to release the aircraft into service. And that takes a lot of diplomacy. It takes a lot of work uh, to make sure that all of their lists are being uh, ticked off. And there is no way that Boeing is going to you know, try to get the MAX released to fly only in a few countries and have it still grounded in others. So that is likely what's taking the most time at the moment, is to make sure that when they do release it, when the grounding stops, that it's going to be released all over the world at the same time. There will be no question about the aircraft as being safe once it starts flying again. So, so let's have a look at what the, the main differences are between the 737-800 cockpit that I've showed you during the last few videos and the MAX. Now I'm not going to go into great technical detail here, I'm just going to show you the more obvious things and then you can as always go into the, to the Mentor Aviation app and, uh, and talk to me and ask more specific questions in there, that's why I have the app for. So if you don't have the app make sure that you, um, that you go in now and the, that you download it, free links down here below and uh, let's continue the discussion in there. So. The first thing that you immediately notice when you get into the 737 MAX cockpit is a few things. First of all, you realize that the overhead panel looks exactly the same like it's done on the 737 model basically from the 60s and forward. Still the old type of switches, it looks very much the same, it's in the same order with only a few new things like for example the elevator jam landing assist and there are some lights in here that have changed color and changed text but apart from that it's very much just like it's always been now one thing that i see immediately in here is that where we used to have an apu egt meter over here it's now empty so that has moved down into a new system which you can access through these huge new screens and through a new info button that you have down here, but more about that later. The real thing that really catches everyone's eyes is of course these four huge wide screens. Okay, so let's have a look at these beautiful big screens then. Well, if you look here, this is the captain's side. 
the primary flight display, the first thing you see is that you have now an expanded uh, horizon going through the primary flight display. Below that you have a huge compass rose and you can see that we can now see the, gr the ground speed being shown over here where that used to be on the navigation display before. You can also see the uh, VOR um, indicators, the uh, IDENTS for the VORs and up here in the left hand side we have now something called an auxiliary area. The auxiliary area has loads of very important functions. Uh, some of them are actually um, customizable for the, um, the airlines, so the airlines can decide what they want in this space. But you can already see now that you have things like the transponder call, you have the tail number, uh, you have the clock. So while the clock used to be a digital or analog clock by itself, that clock has now disappeared and it's been replaced by the uh, time down here. So right now in the MAX, the uh, MAX will actually know itself when we're starting to push back and when we uh, uh, get back onto stand. So it will calculate our block time and our flight time based on the weight on wheel switches and the IRS position. But those of you who are a little bit interested in flying um, and the B holdings and VR holdings would probably ask yourself, well, how can we time the holdings now? Or, um, you know, if we want to measure the time, for example, we need to be at flight level 300 at a specific time. Well, we now have a new clock switch up here. And if you hit that, that opens up the chronograph. So the chronograph will go there and it will calculate down for as long as you want it. You can stop it with the same button. And then if you want to reset it, you click it one more time and that disappears, which is kind of cool. Apart from that, there's not more, much more news here. If we go over to this side, there's a lot of news. So uh, on the captain's side, this is the navigation display and that is sharing its space together with the uh, uh, engine display. And as you can see, the engine display, what used to be divided into two screens, is now uh, one screen like this, and you can see the uh, flap position indicator. is used to be analog, and now it's digital. And you have the uh, fuel indicator as well down here. So uh, don't ask, by the way, why this is red. It's because uh, someone who has been using the simulator before have done some kind of failure which have uh, left those red boxes. Basically, whenever you have red boxes on the engine instrumentation, that shows that an exceedance has happened. And this being a simulator, um, they must have tested something before. But this is the captain's navigation display. It looks a little bit cramped when you have to share it together with the engine display. But if you look over on the first officer side instead, you see that uh, his or her navigation display is absolutely huge. And at the bottom of that navigation display, you can now put the virtual situation display, the VSD, uh, which is going to be absolutely huge and will greatly improve the situational awareness when you're out flying, seeing, showing things like, for example, um, terrain below you, where you will end up uh, using your current vertical speed, um, where you will reach the speed that you're asking for on the um, MCP and so on. So that's a great um, tool. And over here you have the uh, PFD of the first officer with the same kind of information as the captain has. Like that. So if we continue then, you'll see that there's a big difference between the uh, 737NG and the MAX when it comes to this part. Most notably is probably this um, landing gear lever, which used to be a huge lever on the NG. It's now just this small digital lever. And instead of having three positions, which we have in the NG, it now has just down and up. Now, that is something that will come as a little bit of a, um, something that we have to think about because we are used to in the after takeoff checklist on the NG to go with the um, engine, sorry, to go with the um, uh, landing gear level from up to off. And obviously if you would do that on the max, you might just inadvertently lower the landing gear. So that's something that we have to think about. This is the standby ADI that looks the same as on uh, some of the more modern 800s that we're flying. You now have the uh, nose wheel, uh, the alternate nose wheel steering switch here, which used to be out on the left corner here on the captain's side before. And below that, you have a completely new panel where the uh, the old 
six screen used to be. So you see that you have the uh, brake um, accumulator pressure indicator, you have the uh, auto brake setting, um, you now also have on the MFD, the multi multiple functional display, you have an info button and that info button will open up a whole new setting where you can go in and you can question things like for example if you have some kind of APU fault or some fault that's indicated and uh, your um, uh, maintenance control wants to know what it is then we can go in and we can question what the fault is and then get fault codes uh, and also get access to some information on whether or not we can actually dispatch with that fault or not so these are completely new functions which uh, is going to be very very interesting to um, start using but apart from that this looks very much like the 737 ng that i'm used to now why don't we have a look at how to start the engines because there are some differences in uh, how to start the um, the engines as well so let's have a look i'll actually just start up one engine um, and once again i want to emphasize that i'm obviously sitting in a simulator here so it's not like i'm just randomly starting an engine so start switch goes to ground you can immediately see that the n2 is starting to rise and there you see something new. It goes into motoring mode. So it motors the engine until it's ready, until it's expanded enough. And then when the engine is ready, it will continue to go out of the motoring setting up to about 25. Let's see when that happens. There we go, now the engine feels like it's ready, motoring is gone, so then we can put the start switch up to idle, basically adding fuel, and the fuel ignites, you see the EGT is rising there, N2 and N1 is rising. Everything is looking normal here. Now where a uh, CFM56 would get started cut out at about 56% N2, this leap one Bravo will go much higher than that. So you can see we're still up here to about 63%. There we get started cut out. And now the engine is stabilizing itself. So what you can take from this is that it actually takes quite a lot longer to start the engine on the 737 MAX than it does on the NG. And that has to do with the, uh, the, uh, the drive shaft inside of the engine that needs a little time while it's being motored to kind of straighten itself out. The 737 uh, new engines, the, uh, the uh, Leap 1 Bravo engines are fantastical new engines. They give up to a 15% improvement in efficiency, but they're also quite delicate. So um, they do require us to take good care of them, especially during the startup sequence, but even later on when it comes to warm up and cool down um, before and after we've been flying. But apart from that, the MCP, where we control the autopilot, look exactly the same as on the 800. Like I was saying, the overhead panel has some smaller changes to it. And the central pedestal looks exactly the same. So that's it, guys. Uh, like I said, if you have more questions about the 737 MAX, if you want to discuss this, we have a specific forum about the MAX inside of the Mentor Aviation app. And I would love to see as many of you as possible in there. We're about 20,000 people that are active in the app every month now, but I want to double that and I want to double it again because I, you know the more people that are in there to keep the discussions alive and well, the more interesting it is and the more vibrant discussions we can get through. I am in there, quite a few of my colleagues are in there as well, answering your questions. I am doing live streams inside of the app now, and if you have the premium feature, you'll be able to ask me questions directly during the live streams inside of the app. So use the links here below, download the app, it's completely free to download. Make sure that you go in and you make yourself a profile, put a profile picture in there, and participate in the discussions. I would love to see you guys in there. 
Have an absolutely fantastic day and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.